Yeah, yeah, so here we are. And uh, what's on your mind this morning? For me, uh, quite a lot of things. And I just saw all the winners of the, the Emmy Awards. Now, I think we got to the stage in our lives now where in the past, TV was a lot more limited. So, um, yeah, I used to get excited to watch the Emmy Awards. I used to love the Golden Globes. I used to love the Oscars. All those ratings, those the viewership of those shows has plummeted in the last couple of years. And um, if you just scratch the surface and don't give it, and don't give it much thought, it's, oh, the quality is bad. They're not the boring. No, the show, the show is exactly the same. It's the same funny people. You've still got the Jim Carrey's and the Ricky Gervais kind of people who are still there entertaining. They're wonderful. Tina Fey. Ratings are down because the irony is that the Emmy Awards are showcasing and showing us what TV to watch. And we're watching this TV and we're not watching your Emmy Awards. So the Emmy Awards, what I do, I've just copied and pasted all the winners. Did a little, so it, it's telling me what shows to watch, what TV shows to look out for. And I heard about this uh, comedy show called Ted Lasso. I don't know. I hope I'm pr uh, pronouncing it correct. Ted and then L-A-S-S-O. Everyone's been raving about the show. People have been writing on Twitter, etc. What a wonderful show it is. Turns out, one of the main one of the main winners, Ted Lasso. So I think it's on Netflix. I think. Let let me get let me find out about it. Let me watch it. Outstanding outstanding comedy series. Outstanding supporter supporting actor, Brett Goldstein. Never heard of Brett Gold. Brett Goldstein. It sounds like somebody I went to school with. You know, Brett Goldstein. I mean, what a common name. Uh, Ted Lasso had three, nom four nominations for that particular category in the one show. I've never come across that. Four. So do yourself a favor. Just uh, go to the Google and uh, Google uh, um, the list, Emmy Award list of winners, because, you know, you might not want to watch the whole. Oh, maybe I'll watch the, the Crown. We all know about The Crown. The Crown's been very popular. I watched a few episodes of The Crown. And the only reason I didn't carry on watching it, too much of a commitment. Because The Crown has been around for a good couple of seasons, and I hadn't been watching it. Very difficult to binge watch The Crown. Me personally, you might disagree. There's another excellent show that's been around for a good number of seasons. This Is Us. Excellent show. I've never, cry I've never cried so much on a, a television show. But eventually, I lost Chesach because it's just too much. Too much of a commitment. There's, I think there's seven or eight uh, um, seasons. I think I got to season five or season six. It's, it's just got too much. Still got time to watch a bit of sport and uh, sport. We even, view, I think, I view sport differently. I don't know about you. Also, it used to be a, ma a, ma a major event. If it was a, the, the rugby, one of the rugby championships, it's changed its name a hundred times, or several times. I, I used to watch every game, All Blacks Australia. Um, um, Australia against, uh, all. I only watched the, the, the South African games, the Springbok games. Because there's so much, there's so many other things to do. Who has got time? You know, for me, just following the news on Twitter is is a full time thing for me. I don't know about you. So, I haven't gone to watch the rugby at at, uh, at Wayne, my friend Wayne, for for since the beginning of lockdown. You know, it's very strict. So Wayne and I have both been uh, vaccinated, except Wayne. Wayne hasn't had his second vaccine, but he had the COVID. So he thinks having the COVID is almost like being vaccinated. That's Wayne's attitude. So he says he'll um, get. He said he'll. He says he'll get the the second vaccine eventually. Eventually, who knows? Yeah, he will. And um, so he's sitting there, no mask, watching the rugby. What a pleasure! What a pleasure! And. Uh, Springboks, yes, this, this is not this is not a sports show. I know, not even going to cover. Yeah, terrible game. And then I did something that I've never done before. I don't know if you have you ever done that. Uh, have you ever done this? The game has ended. Have you ever sat 
and actually watched and listened to the rugby analysts actually giving a a review, sorry, a, a review of the game, like their comments on how the game went, and what went right, what went wrong, who was the better team, who, why did the Springboks lose, why did Australia win? Have you ever done that? I've never, I haven't done that for many, 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 many years. Normally the game ends, switch it off, who cares? Let's move on. We've got a life. So I'm at Wayne. Why do I not get up straight away? Why do I still end up sitting and watching? Because Wayne, bless him, he also needs to go out. He's lost his keys. He can't find his keys. So what you learn in life, do I, do I get up and help him look, look for his keys? No. It's his house, right? He, there's no point me looking for the keys for it. It's his house. I don't know all the nooks and crannies of his house. I mean, for all I know, I, I, I go into his bedroom and then he's, there he's, his wife's half naked. Oops, sorry. Sorry, oops, the keys are, under, are stuck under your tochus. Oh, ooh, nice, nice, uh, nice thong. No. Wake up the children. The dogs start, they got, they got four. Four of uh, these uh, long-haired dushes. The, the dogs start barking. Wake up his children. Wake up his... No. You know, he must take responsibility for his own keys. I relax. I don't get involved. I land up watching the analysts, the rugby analysts. And you know what? They were excellent. They were very good. You know why? Because they, they said everything that I was thinking. I agreed with everything they said. Therefore, very good analysts. Very impressive. Well, Kobani Bobo, he, he gave a, he showed how the, how the back line, how, uh, what's his name? The fullback, whose name I can't remember, didn't run straight. Makazole and Pimpi, he ran out of space, didn't cut. I knew that. I knew. I knew. I said, Kobani, well done. I agree with you. That's what they did wrong. Tackling. They missed 20 tackles. I knew that. They missed a lot of tackles. Playing the ball on the ground is bad enough. Taking the ball and crawling on your knees with the ball. I think we did that three times. But I think, but the thing is, we did all these big mistakes at crucial times when we were like, about to, not, a, not exactly about to score a try, but we were, you know, get in there. Eh, how do you die? Look, we started the second half very well. For a while, we scored a try straight away. Wish I wish Faf de Klerk would get a haircut. Cut your hair. Whenever he's wiping his hair away from his face, I get irritated. It irritates me. Just get a, get a, get a haircut. Just get a haircut. Anyway, look. As time has moved on, um, you know, in the past, when the Springboks lost the game, I would be very upset. And I'd actually feel bad. I'd feel a knot in my stomach. I, I'd, I'd feel, I would take it so personally. I'll take it so personally. Why? I now deal with it in a very mature manner. Hey, look. Hey, Wayne. Wayne, it was great to see you. Thank you for the coffee at, before the game. Your scrambled egg. Wayne can only make scrambled eggs. That's all he can do. Good. Thank you for the scrambled eggs at half time. Thank you for the other, the second cup of coffee at half time. Wayne, it was great seeing you. So, what, what, what technique did I use there? You, you may be thinking. What, 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 what? I focused on the friendship and the relationship. It's not. It's not only about the rugby. It's like a, a simcha. It's a celebration. We celebrate in getting together. I haven't sat down in Wayne's, in my friend's lounge. Is it 20 months? Who, who, you know, you stop counting after a while. Is it 20 months, this lockdown? I hadn't sat in Wayne's lounge for 20 months. Nothing's changed much. Um, okay, one, he, he lost his one dog. His one dog passed away. Still got the parakeet. So every, yeah, the house looks the same. He hasn't changed much. Look, it's been 20 months. The TV, very nice big TV. It was good to get. It was good to feel. It was getting. It was feeling normal again. We get. We feeling normal. I think that's the the thing. That's what I'm getting at. Starting to get back to normal. Eventually, Wayne found his keys. <laughs> he found his keys. He's so funny. I've known Wayne. I've known this. You know, you got some friends. Not all of us have got this. Somebody wrote on Twitter the other day. Do you have friends from twenty years ago? Do you are you still friends with them? Like that's like a big question. 
funnily enough, I got two friends from 1985. We've known each other since 1985. I got a friend from 1992. Got a friend from 1992. And then sort of like other friends not as close. We're talking 20 years, 10 years. Who's the, what, the, 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 the most recent friend? What? Mm, let's do a study now. Hmm. Now, nah, maybe. I, I, I haven't got any recents, like six months a year. I think, maybe I'm wrong. We get to a certain age. <clears throat> I think maybe you stop meeting new friends, maybe. Do you, do you stop making friends from a certain age? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe when you get married or settle down or you're living with someone or you just you settled, whatever you are, single, whatever. Maybe you don't really go out, you don't socialize as much, and you're not meeting people. Um, Bernice is so she's so analytical. Well, she's very clever. She thought of something that I, I never thought of. So we our twenty. We got a friend. She's a nurse. Well, you met her the, the other day. What a fictitious name did we give her? Let's just say the the friend. So she's twenty eight. So Bernice would say, "Oh, shame. I feel sorry, so sorry for her." Because she hasn't been able to meet anybody. If you're a young single person, since the beginning of lockdown and COVID, you haven't been able to go dating and meeting somebody. And it's like, it's like you're not, you, you, those are the golden years, maybe. The golden years from like, from the age of 24 to the age of 32 or 30. That's your peak, eh? That's when you're in peak condition. You're looking your best. You like you kind of like know where you are, kind of thing. You know where your life's going. You may be qualified. You finish studying. That's the time you want to meet and get settled down or have a long term relationship. So if this COVID time has happened during that golden gap, they call it the golden. Do I call it the golden gap? Let's call it the golden. Let's call it the golden gap. Obviously, there's a better name for it. Time period, age. You, you understand. So it's, is it a waste? You've wasted. It's a, it's a, you can say it's, a, it's quite something. But having said that, we're all in the same boat. So if you've, from the age of 26 and a half to the age of 28, you've missed the opportunity to, to meet somebody, everyone's in the same boat. That, that person that you were supposed to meet in the last two and a half years, you haven't. They haven't met anybody because they everyone's in the same boat. Look at it from that point of view, please. You know, and don't don't be so needy, don't be so codependent. You know, so you can be by yourself for a little bit. You know, and one can argue, you know, maybe it's better to get married and meet somebody later. You more, but maybe from thirty two or th from thirty two, thirty eight, forty two, forty forty two. Maybe it's better. You're more mature. You're more settled. More financially independent. Eh, that's one way of looking at it, eh? What do you say? Yo. Feedback, some feedback. Now, nah, what? Oh, I was going to hold on to the Gerald feedback for a little bit later, but I can't. I was going to hold on to it. But let, let me tell you about Gerald. So, just a quick little recap. You might have missed previous episodes. Gerald contacted me about two or three weeks ago. Blood sugar levels, like very, very high. What must I do? Am I diabetic? Blah, 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 blah. No. It's fairly obvious to me, but maybe I'm special. I don't know. Fairly obvious to me. Just go to the blood. Just go to the doctor and get examined. Have your blood tests, blood, blood pressure, uh, blood glucose levels, cholesterol. What's the other one? Whatever. Get, uh, you know, get examined. Ch get the chest and the lungs and... The, you must listen to the heartbeat, the lub, it's called lub dub, not lub kaboom. You know, you've got to make sure the heartbeat sounds good. Doof, doof, doof. Doof, doof, doof. <laughs> make sure it's all good. But not, no, for some reason, Gerald, anyway, I, I went over all of this. I said this all to, to uh, in, the, in the episode. I said, Gerald, get back to me. What? Lo and behold, Gerald gets, uh, Gerald got back to me yesterday, last night, in fact. Gerald, interesting fellow, very like, I wouldn't say analyze, paralyze, 
but he does analyze, and there is a little bit of paralysis involved, but not terrible that he doesn't get anything done. But I, in terms, purely from a health point of view, bit of a procrastinator. Took him three, four weeks to. Sorry, he didn't go to a doctor. He did something that I, he he did something from left field. I didn't see this coming. He went to a pharmacy. I wouldn't have thought of that. He went to one of the disc skims, you know. I'm worried about disc skim. I hope they're doing okay. No, because they're doing fine. That was a joke. They they did his blood pressure. So 133 over 85. That's okay. I'm happy with that. It's all right. Cholesterol levels, a little bit high. I think it was 6.6, .6, a little bit high. But the main thing, blood glucose levels. Blood glucose levels, 14. The nurse looked him straight in the eye. She said, Gerald, you're a diabetic. There's no sugar coating. Huh, no pun intended. There's no uh, what pussyfooting about. You are diabetic. End of story. Go to a doctor. So Gerald, he's going to go to the doctor. I mean, he just got to the doctor. He should have gone to the doctor three, four weeks ago. But he was, uh, he, he had to think about it. He had to think about it. Yeah. Um, maybe I didn't explain this uh, before in more detail. And the thing with diabetes, the scary thing about deep diabetes, it's insidious. And the damage, the damage that the high sugar blood glucose levels do is that it causes very, very slowly, without you noticing, irreversible damage to your blood vessels. First blood vessels to get affected, your penis. Your penis. Because those blood vessels are very small. You're not going to be able to, your erectile dysfunction. That made you think, right? Brain. You're going to get transient ischemic attacks, which is a fancy word for many strokes. That's where it all starts. Diabetic retinopathy, because that's where all the smallest blood vessels are. Irreversible blindness. Then there's the nerve damage, which happens a little bit slower. Diabetes is hectic if, you, if it's not controlled. And the thing about diabetes, it takes 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years to do all that damage. So you don't notice it. Get yourself sorted out. I read some article, I think I mentioned it to you the other day, half the, popula half the population might have diabetes because there's such a high level of, of, of obesity. You don't need to be morbidly obese to have diabetes. Just be 10 kilograms overweight or 20 kilograms overweight, you've got diabetes. Well, look, I hope, I, Gerald, I hope I put the fear of God into you. You may not be religious. I'm not religious either. It's just a term. But still, I like the term. The fear of God. The fear of an unknown entity. All-powerful. Down on you. Or the eye. Think of uh, Lord of the Rings. The eye. Brr. Have I, have I, has that worked? Got to do it. Got to do it. Please, Gerald. So that's the feedback on Gerald. So Gerald said he's going to the doctor. He says soon. He wouldn't... He wouldn't... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Commit. He wouldn't commit to, to a date. I mean, I would do it today, Monday. You know, today's Monday. Do Monday. What twin? What's the date today? Twentieth of September. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. Ah. <sighs> when I was sitting watching the rugby and enjoying the analysts with their accurate information, Wayne's looking for his keys, and I was getting flashbacks. And I just remembered. Imagine how much time you waste of your life. If you're not just, if you're looking for your keys all the time. And then I, I remembered my parents. And maybe I've mentioned this before, but I still, it's kind of so weird. I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. My parents spent their lives looking for their glasses, their spectacles. They spent, they literally spent their lives looking for their glasses. 
it's, it's bizarre. Just have a place for your glasses. Did, did they lose their keys as much? No. My father used to keep his car keys in his cupboard, and my mother used to keep her car keys in her drawer. Maybe, I can't remember about the car keys, but glasses, they spent their lives looking for their bloody glasses. It's just insane. And, uh, and Wayne, <laughs> he's, he, oy, he, anyway, you know what? He's a very highly successful guy, does very well. I mustn't criticize. Mustn't criticize. So, a bit of feedback from Friday. Friday, Friday got a bit, uh, Friday got a bit out of hand. Friday got a bit nasty. Um, cause, uh, I, I had no, we had no water. Major water cutoff in, turns out, I didn't realize it at the time. The most, most of the north of Johannesburg, no water. So Wednesday was uh, Yom Kippur. No, yeah, Wednesday night was Yom Kippur, but I didn't go for a run on Wednesday because I normally run in the evenings and the fast starts starts around quarter to six. And then I didn't run on Thursday either. Friday comes, I haven't run for two days. And if you get into your running, even though you're not highly a highly trained athlete like myself, you really, really get into your running. You you feel bad. You feel guilty if you don't run. It's crazy. It's weird. It affects your whole psyche. It's incredible. It's all about. It's actually a physiological, scientific thing. It's all about the endorphins. Your body produces endorphins. Endorphins is like a, a hormone. It's like a. It does a whole lot of things. But one of the things, it actually creates addiction to the exercise. There's a whole. It's obviously more complicated than that. But and then it, so then if you the body produces endorphins and endorphins. Endorphins is like a natural antidepressant. So your body gets used to this endorphins. And if you don't run, your body then feels that you're not getting those endorphins and it doesn't react well. And you can start getting grumpy. Grumpy, it's, I think it's, it starts off with guilt, with grumpiness. Anyway, what did I do on Friday, you might ask? Because listen, yeah, I didn't know at the time. I thought, let me take a chance. I'll go for a run and maybe by the time I get back from the run, there will be water. No. And maybe this is a lesson. This isn't just about me. I'm, I want to teach you a lesson. I think this is important. So I go for a run. Listen, I get back from the run. I'm not schwit I'm schwitzy, but not to the extent that it's like, I'm schwit. Look, I'm schwitzy. I'll be honest, I'm schwitzy. What do I do? No water. Thought of going to Wayne. Thought of going, driving to him and having a shower because he lives... But then again, maybe he didn't have water either. Didn't even ask. So, I keep surgical spirits, which is like alcohol. You know, so I took a lappy, a face towel, and I soaked it in the surgical spirits. I mean, what did I do? You know where I'm going. You know what I did, I think. So, I wait, I did. I, I want to use the, I don't want to use the term Portuguese shower. Turns out that is not nice. That's derogatory. It's a bit racist. It's offensive. Let's just say I did what um, what Charlize Theron did in that movie Monster when she was a homeless prostitute. So I did that. She went to Mag Magazine Pompini, went to the tap, and she did the, the thing. I did that with, with the surgical spirits. Did the armpits, did around the face, around the ears, did the neck, did the tummy, the chest, genitals. Very important. Very sweaty area the gen around the genitals. It's very sweaty. But I got a bit of a rude away. Ooh. See, if you're running a lot, you do a bit of chafing. Chafing that you're not aware of. Well, now I'm aware of it. Burn, baby, burn. Yo! Yo, I did it. And the burn, the burn happened. <coughs> but I carried on. I'd rather do the burn than smell. Really worked very, I'm telling you, it worked really well. Did a bit of the tochas, but when I say the tochas, I don't mean inside. I don't mean, I don't mean inside, just, you know, outside. You go for the main sweaty areas. And then I came into the study. We, we, us, this is the, the, oh, by the way, this is like our study, but we've got a television on the right of me. Uh, so Benice and Alexa are watching TV, and I sit down, and Benice comments, I just smell alcohol, she says. And then, but then she just moved on. Maybe she got to, she was knitting. She got distracted. So that's what I did. Maybe consider it. 
Get, keep some surgical spirits. That's my message for today. So, what have we learned? What, what have we learned today? Um, not much. You know about choosing TV shows. Uh, no water, what to do with no water. Um, some health advice. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I had a lot. I don't want to, I've got to, you know, I've been told, keep keep it short. I'm going to leave you wanting more. That's a, an expression. Okay, so until until next time.